Welcome back again, non guests on Poison Rock. It's a pleasure to have you again with us. First of all, how are you? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been quite a couple of, a couple of months, uh, yeah. six months or something. Yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. So, how are you so doing? That's good. Um, well, like everyone, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> stuck. Yeah, stuck. I try to... Um, get myself busy as much as possible um yeah. you know go for walks in nature as yeah. much as possible learning yeah. new things writing yeah. so well, yeah i saw you know. the, the, the 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 photos you posted about nature amazing places yeah sometimes the soul needs to be in contact with the the, the nature yeah. yes with you especially, yeah, especially in those times especially yeah. in these times yeah so for sure <laughs> Of course, then um, just let's start with the common questions that um, who are and Trump and how the band be began. I mean, how the band started. Well, <clears throat> um, at the origin, uh, I was not there, so uh, <laughs> but um, uh, there was those friends, you know, uh, who knew each other from from school and uh. They formed bands and everything. And the first um, entity where mm -hmm. they made music together with that same concept, uh, because uh, especially because of Cerninus, the founding yeah. member, uh, was uh, really into Satanism. So he wanted to uh, include his beliefs in the music yeah. he was doing. Um, more than a gimmick, just something serious. So they started that band called Morbid Death in uh, 86, 87, if I'm not wrong. And uh, they disbanded in uh, 91 because of the name, uh, changed name. And uh, later on, uh, they came back together under the enthroned entity. And, um, <laughs> so yeah. new, name, new name, new everything. Yes, and so, now you are the singer of the band. And before you were the guitarist, the guitarist of, uh, if I'm not wrong. How did you become the, the singer? Briefly. Well, um, well, we had to part ways at some point with uh, the previous uh, vocalist, Savatan. Yeah. Um, well, there were some musical differences and uh, as well some uh, personal things, but nothing like uh, war or anything like that. No. Like, lots of people seems to think uh, because, yeah, you know how people are in those situations. Yeah. So we're still really good friends. So, you know. But, um, so we needed a new vocalist and a new bass player. Or <laughs> one who could do both. So, my last idea was to become the vocalist because I really didn't want to be the center of attention. <laughs> I just liked my place there, my quiet, warm, dark place on the side of the stage. Nobody really paying attention to me. You know, I was happy there, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, On the corner <laughs> of the stage. Yeah, just there, you know, doing my thing, <laughs> fuck, the rest, fuck the rest, you know. So, <clears throat> but we, we wanted to try out, there was uh, some vocalists uh, that we had in mind, some known, some absolutely not known, <laughs> um, but things didn't work out. And, um, well, the other guys... Uh, said like, a, yeah, well, it's cool to have vocalists, but uh, we couldn't find really one who could play well bass, at least improving the bass part yeah. of the band. And uh, so we, we took a bass player. So we had a uh, Forgoth, which was a really, really, really close friend of ours, but he didn't want to join unless I became the vocalist. And mm. uh, we said like, yeah, we have a problem there because I don't <laughs> want to be the vocalist. So, but and in the, the end, end, the other guys, uh, the drummer and the other guitar player took me apart and, uh, you know, they were like, come on, man, make an effort, try at least. And I was like, yeah, but, you know, I don't want to be sent to attention. And I, but I have to play my solos, you know, I tried to find any excuse not to be, yes, to you know, be the vocalist. <laughs> and in the end, yeah. So, but uh, Forgoth told me himself again, like, man, I'm coming with you if you're becoming the vocalist. So. I was a bit trapped in the corner by everyone. And then you so I, I, I did a tryout. Yeah, I did a tryout. Yeah. Uh, everybody liked it. And I said, I said like, okay, I'll do it. Okay. Waiting 
to find somebody better. <laughs> and um, in the end, I started to realize that actually I could give the right emotions to my own lyrics. Yeah. Uh, something I was a bit frustrated, not because necessarily of uh, Sabaton, not necessarily because of that. But um, I think only the person who wrote, wrote who, uh, who lived uh, what's written there uh, can yeah. really retranscribe the right emotions. Yes, sure. So sure. That, that's the thing first that convinced me. Then on stage, of course, it took a while because I was used to uh, just being my corner. Yeah. So, well, but with the, with the time, yeah, I, I like my place there now. <laughs> but, you know, it was a long process to accept. Now you are like the frogman, yes. In for, as a, these are things, of course, that I read, and uh, you have to confirm is it, if uh, right or wrong. At the beginning, the first album of Throne, they were like speaking about the topic like death and destruction. Then it comes more into the es es esotericism. I mean, this was a spontaneous stuff, or just you wanted to bring uh, in another level speaking about you know occultism all the esoteric topics um well yes and no <laughs> um well, yes the and thing not. was that uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> since the very beginning um the the key word is uh, was a satanism and left and path with the band yeah so um we wanted to explore different topics yeah. of the subject because um, occultism and satanism are so wide and uh, diverse diverse that you can speak for a lifetime about different topics and never repeat yourself yeah so each album or couple of albums had uh, their own um, doctrine or discipline of uh, the left and path or the median path so in the first albums you will see, especially in the first one, you will see more like that, not, not going to say naive, but uh, that traditional Satanism that uh, yeah. you can find in maybe other traditional bands as well, you know, like the anti-Christian part, the blasphemous mm -hmm. part. Yeah. Um, the In some cases, even a bit of romanticism uh, regarding that, like more like Victorian uh, approach. Victorian. Then uh, we moved on a bit towards um, sabbatical, magic, sabbatical uh, satanism, uh, then complete destruction, uh, the destructive and uh, uh, angry part. Yeah. As each album as well a reflection, uh, a mirror effect of uh, how our life was the year before. That's yeah. normal. We just translate that in motion, so it comes like this. So you can say that before the Apocalypse Manifesto, we were really pissed off. So... <laughs> That album is, of course, very brutal and very destructive. <laughs> uh, sometimes I would say too much. There's, there's not never too much, too much, too much brutality in black metal. But I mean, <laughs> um, it's a bit going in every direction. Yes, you know what yes, I mean? yes, 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 yes. It sure. was too chaotic, but uncontrolled chaos completely. Yeah. And you can hear that as personally. I can hear that on those two albums, uh, Apocalypse Manifesto and Armored Vistal Hell. Those two albums are really, to me, the ones I like the least, but still don't deny them because they represent a part of the history of the band. Yeah. Oh. And then after it became a bit more, yeah. afterwards it became more and more like, um, you know, we still talked about how much we hated Christian, it's Christianity <laughs> and it's uh, all. But at some point I just... But at some point, I just uh, decided, like, you know, Christian knows we hate them. They, yeah. we, they, they absolutely, they know, they know. It you should, okay. you should see, you should see this house, this home where I am now. This is the countryside home where my yeah. parents sometimes come, you know, into the, we in, 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 the weekend. <laughs> in, my, in my relative's parents' home room, there is a... a, a um, up on the bed, a huge, huge, huge painting on the last dinner of Jesus Christ. And I have a, and all the home were like the Bible, church books. It seems like to be in a chapel. And I said, okay, this is going away, this is going away, this is going away. 
<laughs> it seems and I have to to put us you know sage candles to go to clean the air like the opposite <laughs> something well you know there are nice objects of decoration in yeah, some kind sure. of way <laughs> but sometimes are, are creepy a, creep, a little bit creepy sometimes <laughs> But um, speaking about the first album of Entron, in your opinion, of course, how was the sound at the at the beginning and the atmosphere, and how much it changed in all these years? Yeah, of course. Like uh, the band always tried to uh, give the right production to the songs because uh, some songs would fit with that sound, but uh, some others not with that sound. So. Yeah. I can't, for example, imagine uh, Prophecies of Pig and Fire with a, sound, with a production like the last album, like with the Cold Black Sun, for example, oh, or vice versa. Yeah. So production-wise and the sound, uh, we try to, we, it will always a bit sound the same in yeah. a, some kind of way because yeah. of the way people play, you know, like a guitar player has his style, his touch, his thing. But um, production-wise, yeah, it's changed a lot through the years because different studios, different uh, songs that we want, different yeah. uh, ideas, different uh, direction. But we always wanted not to stick up to the same sound always because I think that would be boring. And uh, I think the production, the sound, the building of a sound is yeah. as much a part of a, a, a song, a nim, than uh, guitars, drums, or bass or vocals. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's why you had such an evolution. And uh, the the point is absolutely not to have uh, the top notch per production because uh, that has make, that makes no sense to me. Uh, the best production would be the production that fits the song. Like, for example, I think Dark Throne, the best yeah. example ever. You know, <laughs> has the perfect production. Like on Transylvanian Hunger or uh, mm -hmm. Under a Funeral Moon. They have the perfect production. Yeah, I'm trying to. It, it's it's impossible to interview that. them. That. It's impossible to interview Fan Reads. I'm trying to look him anywhere from Peaceville to here, but it's impossible to find him. <laughs> no, but that sound fits the songs. If you put a, so a sound like, I would say, uh, aborted or a strapping young lad or so, yeah. cryptopsy on yeah. a dark throne album, it would sound like shit. Yeah, you know, and the same. If you put the dark rune sound a sound on hypocrisy, that would really sound totally utter shit. <laughs> so you know, we try to to do the what what we want, how to retranscribe our emotion the best. Yes, and uh, the production is a part of the of the process. Yes, and in all all these years of album releases with you as frontman. There is one in particular that you are really attached, and if yes, why? Oh, yeah, the question. <laughs> the question, yeah. Well, the I'm not gonna make. I'm gonna know. I'm not gonna make the easy answer like most would do. <laughs> I like all the albums because, yeah, I do. <laughs> I love each each and every album. It represents a part of me and a part of my yeah, life and a part course. of the band's life, but. Um, one in particular? Yeah. Mm. Can I say two? Yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. I, mean, I, would say, you. I would say Tetracarsist, of course, okay. because um, that's sentimental and plus I really love that album. Uh, the first album where I was lead vocalist mm -hmm. and um, uh, there was a lot of um, frustration, lots of mm -hmm. um, freedom. Uh, in that album, because uh, there were some songs that uh, I wrote during the five previous years yeah. of the release of the yeah. album and could never record them or use them because uh, some ex-members didn't like the sound, the songs yeah. or they wanted to do something different, you know, or, or, or some members wanted to do something different. Um, uh, so at last, the members that were on and then at that time were like fuck man those songs are fucking good you should we should really use them so we're like oh fuck hell yeah finally so <laughs> finally. at last i could fucking at last use those songs um and that was cool that was good that was um and uh yeah as, as i said it was it's sort of uh 
nostalgia and um, yeah. and everything with that album and the vibe through the whole album, the memories are something uh, intemporal. And on the same level, but completely different reason, uh, I would say the Cold Black Sun album, yeah, the last one. Through that, yeah. Not because it's the last one and I want to promote it. No, because that would be <laughs> cheap. No, that album is uh, special as well. It was like the first album in five years. We never stayed that long without yeah. re releasing an album. And releasing it. those five years, uh, I had a lot, a lot of uh, personal struggle. Uh, excessively hard, lo uh, lots of troubles. And uh, <clears throat> you can hear it, I think, on that album. That album was uh, my exorcism. Yeah. Part one. Part one. <laughs> the part, part one. Part one. <laughs> but of course, um, Black Hawk Sun has also an amazing artwork as well. Yeah, that's that's not for me. That one, that the, the artwork is from uh, Neirat, the yeah. guitar player, the guitar player, who is a really talented artist as well. Yeah. And uh, he captured um, the atmosphere and what we wanted to pass through the what I wanted to pass through the lyrics really well with the cover. And uh, which is cool because the cover is really enigmatic for most people who don't yeah. know anything. Uh, so, yeah, it's a whole. It's a whole. That album uh, was is filled with uh, anger, uh, loneliness, but freedom as well, like the other it's one. It's like a process. And, uh, like a process. Anger, yeah. sadness, and. Yeah. And and then freedom like a process. It was it was good to spit it out. That was yeah. that album represents really well the how I was inside, like a shout, so, like you were yeah. shouting and, all, um, all what you're inside of you. Yeah, yeah, and uh, as well, I was not the only one to have a bad time in the band at that time. So you can hear it's like uh, like everybody came together and just unleash their frustration and uh, their feelings on that album. So it's and, like um, really a, an emotional, not an emotional, like emotional movie, like an emotional, full of uh, feelings. That yeah, it's a really like an authentic song. album. Yeah. Uh, you, cannot, you cannot deny that. And uh, lyric wise, I came up still with um, a concept that has nothing to do with that, but we will reflect that music uh, yeah. really good. So it was something completely different, uh, taking all the cultures we could yeah. uh, across the globe and uh, that uh, some of us, like me and Mentor, uh, studied mm -hmm. for years and uh, take a part of their culture and make it in one song. But each of these yeah. uh, spiritual views are, were still considered heresy by Christianity and uh, everything. So each yeah. song is about a period in time or yeah. Uh, another culture, yeah, you know, and it reflects really well with the music in the meantime as well. Listen and I said part two. one because uh, eh, normally next year part two will come. <laughs> yeah, good so. to know, good to know, good to know. And now this is the maybe the most boring for you and uh, for maybe almost all the band questions towards black metal what means for you <laughs> well <laughs> it means uh, making interviews uh it means <laughs> no honestly uh black metal but well to me it's um the i cannot just come up with an answer that is not been said before to me it's just yeah the mix of my beliefs yeah. which is dark, let's say Satanism yeah. is a the vulgar word for it. But yeah, my views on the left and the median, median path mixed yeah. with the most extreme kind of sound yeah. or with metal. Yes. That's what is the definition of black metal. To me, it's uh, personally, I'm not, I'm talking for me, not for the other members of the no, band. No, it's just for to you. To me, it's a part, what I do with uh, this band, it's uh, a part of my belief. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a catalyst for my uh, beliefs, for my emotions, um, and for things I, my experience, I live through this philosophy and path and life. A concert is a bit like the gathering the congregation for a, yeah. a mass. Like 
a big ritual, not a mass. Yeah. That would be like a, a mockery of Christianity. And I did that in the past. That's that's <laughs> that's there. Uh, not there, but I mean, come on, uh, it's way more serious than yes. than a mockery. So, yes. And if you should put, for example, for example, should you, if you have, I mean, how do you put I'm strong inside the whole black metal scene? Mm. Excuse me, I have a problem. Don't yeah. worry. Okay. Sorry. I can cut this part. It's not a problem. Okay, that's good because, yep. Okay, the cable fell. So. Okay, it's not <laughs> okay. a problem. I was saying that, okay. how, I mean, how do you put Anthron inside the whole black metal scene? <sighs> Sorry. Now I have a problem on the screen. Wait a minute. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> of course it has to happen when I'm doing an interview. That will never happen otherwise. I mean, so, it's okay. It's I'm okay. yours now. Okay, it, it's okay, okay because we, we, with the time I learned how to cut it and fix the, the things, it's not a problem. I was saying that how do you put a throng inside the whole black metal scene? Um, I would... I don't. You don't. <laughs> I'm just doing answer. my thing and I don't give this a shit a about answer. the rest. Yes, this is a good answer. So, we are labeled by other people black metal, yeah. We play black metal, yeah. Yeah. But I leave that to other people because they have more interest than me about that. Me, I'm just doing my my shit, my thing, and I really don't care about the rest of the scene. Except for my free time when I listen to some bands I like. Yeah. Otherwise But we will go through some scene of black metal because I want to know this is you know um question and topic that I speak about with other people who listen black metal or just the some genre of it and I want to know your opinion as well because as you know you are you were the first black metal musician I interviewed so I want to know your opinion about that and what do you think about people saying that the real and the purest black metal is the Norwegian one? They don't know what they're talking about. Because, like, the first black metal band, I'm, I mean, black metal band mm. I heard was from Italy, actually. So, from? Was Death SS, from Death SS, from Italy. Death SS, yeah, seems bastard. So, you had Death SS, which was there even before Venom. Then you have Venom from England. Then you have mm. Hellhammer or Celtic Frost from Switzerland. Yeah. Let's talk, you know, Sarcophago from Brazil. Sarcophago, yeah. You know, then you have maybe in Scandinavia or some other bands here and there. Or like you have Schizo as well from Italy, but that was more yes. trash. But anyway, trash, yes. Black Schizo Shepherd trash. from Belgium. You know, Fuck off, you know, Norwegian did a good thing. Okay, they had a large shitload, lots of good yeah, bands in yeah, the early yeah. 90s. But all the other bands were there way before. Yeah, we already so had a black metal band in Belgium in 84. So people don't know what they're talking about when they say, oh, yes. it's Norwegian, they, 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 they fuck off. Yes, and since and all gonna... respect to my Norwegian friends out there, yeah. but fuck off, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Since we are speaking about that, uh, you know that right now, I mean, black metal has uh, a lot of subgenre for you know, ghost folk to gothic uh, and other stuff. Um, in Italy, as you may know, we had one huge band, Forgotten Tomb. They founded this, uh, we can say, subgenre of black metal called su uh, depressive, suicidal black metal. What do you think mm. about this type of black metal? Is too maybe too too extreme from the music itself. It goes away from the really meanings of black metal. Well, that's not my type of music. I would say not because I found that too extreme or too anything. Because I don't think it is at at all. To be yeah. completely honest. Um, with all the respect I can have for the individuals into those bands, because, um, yeah. um, the, for example, you mentioned Forgotten Tomb, and they are really good friends of mine. Yeah. But 
nah, it's not my thing and I don't think it's that extreme. Like, there are some suicidal bands which are not black metal, but even, I would take, for example, Jacques Brel, you know, Jacques Brel, the French, the, the singer, mm. you know, made some more depressive, put a gun against your head type of song than Forgotten Tube Shining or whoever the hell did that genre would ever create. Yeah. You know, so it's way more extreme than any kind of black metal band ever did. I don't say that those bands, what they band, those bands do is bad. Not at all. Yeah. Because Forgotten Tomb have some really good songs. So yeah. does Shining. Um, but uh, it's the same as early Catatonias to me. It's the same. I put it in the same bag, except for the for the lyrical Yeah, you're concept. right. Yeah, yes. Thinking about it, you're right. You have something in common with Catatonia. Yeah, you're right. And now I want just to speak something a little more cult cultural, just to speak, just to, to going, I mean, making a little bit step far away from the music. And uh, we were speaking before about the artwork of Black Hawthorne, but um, there are some painters or artists, could be poets, whatever, that influenced you or in front. Um. Yeah, um, lyric-wise, not so much, because that mm -hmm. those are really my experience mm -hmm. and everything. Um, but yeah, there are some uh, paintings or some uh, artworks from Berzinski or uh, mm -hmm. Doré, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, uh, Olivier Sagazan as well, but him is more like visual and skull, uh, than something anything else but yeah there's some different artists uh, here and there that um, yeah give something to me and uh, might inspire me for some music here and there like to have a piece that would fit on that part of the lyrics or not like i remember that on uh, <coughs> sorry, on uh, cold black sun yeah. i was uh, busy uh, writing a, a part of uh, son of man mm -hmm. and um, i was staring at that painting of Berzinski and, uh, that I had in my living room. And uh, that really gave me the, the idea like, uh, of, a, of a melody that, or of uh, the, yeah. the essence of a, a riff I came up with with like, my guitar. And that, that, that painting was basically uh, the origin of the riff because uh, it could translate my emotion uh, and that part of the lyrics. And it is important. Really well. This is important. But, um, yeah, but uh, artists like uh, like writers or anything for for music or uh, lyrics, not anymore. Even you, maybe you, uh, you personally, personally, just like you, just known and get like, for example, that you like to read. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Another huge topic. Yeah, my 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 ex had a a little issue with my uh, passion for books at some point, <laughs> which I can't really blame her. <laughs> I had to transform a whole room in my house then uh, into a library because uh, that was the only way to put all the books. <laughs> so, It's and I've still got them proud of it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, I, I really like to, to read and um, even some books that uh, I know uh, would be kind of bullshit but uh, at least I have um, another view another opinion another yeah. approach from somebody else with a different mindset as mine uh, on a topic yes and it's, it's always important and I can to read allow it. myself to yeah. judge it's always important to read even yourself. the opposite side of anything it's like yeah. uh, the book of for example the, the the scholastic book they make for school they are always mm. written by one side by one view and yeah. uh, they should be written by someone that uh, you know just take for example left or right just two sides but of course it's always one side that wrote the book and you have to know who wrote the book to understand better yeah. so in any That's subject it. you have to read it to the to different side for you no know, for having your own opinion your own thoughts and your ideas yeah exactly yeah. 
I like to have a different opinion about the same topic, then I can yeah. say that at least I know what I'm talking about when I say I don't like what that guy wrote. Because too many yeah, people say, ah, I don't like that, but they didn't even explore it, you know? Yeah. Okay, like for example, I'm, there are some things I know I'm not gonna like, and, I'm yeah. not, and I didn't play it, you know? And I'm not planning to, but, <laughs> but when it comes to literature, literature um, yeah. yeah, I prefer to have uh, several opinions on the same subject, so I know what I'm talking about, and I put in front of everything my own experience. Yeah, of course. But uh, speaking of course, always about about you. Um, what bring I mean? What bring you to black metal, and what did you do before joining Enthron? Because we, um, we know you in what on Enthron, but before that, what were you doing? In, in, in the scene, in the war. <laughs> I was in an ABBA cover band. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so... You was no, in a church, of course. I mean, admit it. Oh, yeah, I was, I was a little prayer at the Iron Cross. So, no. Um, no, before uh, the band, uh, well, yeah, well, I was in another band. I, I had several mm -hmm. other bands, like most musicians, um, but none of them worth really mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, I don't say that it was bad, but it was it was bad. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, I got into black metal to my cousin, actually, uh, mm -hmm. musically, because um, uh, he played in a black metal band. Yeah one of the oldest black metal bands. And um, when he first introduced me to what he was doing with his band, um, I was listening to the albums and everything. At first, I didn't like it, to be honest. And, uh, you know, and um, after a few years, I was like, fuck, that's good. Because <laughs> it, so it took me a while. Yeah, because yeah, I was maybe five or six when he threw that at me. But you know, when you're five or six and you hear for the first time, uh, sure. "Welcome to Hell, Black Metal" or "At War with Satan," that's a bit too much direct. <laughs> like, like hitting the kid and throwing throwing the kid in the middle of the swimming pool. I mean, yeah. Instead, instead of instead, oh, making you listening, like uh, I don't know, like Zeppelin, that throw you direct into yeah. the, 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 the the extreme. You know, but then I was into ACDC, you yeah. know, Black Sabbath. And a uh, kiss for fuck's sake, you know, and <laughs> he threw at me all that, that uh, stuff. But um, yeah, later on, of course, I was like, oh, damn, it's good. But yeah, yeah that's how I got into the music um, uh, in the first place. Like uh, the philosophy was something else, but uh, musically, yeah, that was uh, to my cousin. Yes, and, uh, yes, of course. And speaking about, of course, you say music and black metal, what, what started to be your black like metal influences of course and also other musical influences because i think you have other one and not only black metal music you listen to yeah well you know that's something that uh when i was having that discussion with um, uh, a friend from that with daniel from a blood red throne when we won tour in colombia and uh at the table next to us, there were like some fans of Enthroned, mm -hmm. you know. And when they heard our conversation, they were shocked. So they, they stood up and uh, they smashed their glasses and uh, said, ah, so disappointed, fuck you, uh, you're not true black metal. Because we were saying that... They are extreme in South America. They are extreme. Yeah, but fuck it. I prefer to be myself and not be yes. liked than to say something, stuff, something that is not true to please people. So, yeah, like, our early influence, yeah, they were, of course there was some metal or even black trash metal in it. But personally, uh, I have a lot of classical music influence in, yeah, when I was listening in, uh, in the beginning and uh, playing, playing music. So a lot of uh, Saint-Saëns, uh, Wagner, uh, Mussorgsky, uh, Berlioz, uh, Stravinsky, yeah. uh, Tchaikovsky, and uh, those ones, like, uh, I listened to so a lot of music. music still have the vinyls you know and um but as well some some more rock stuff like you know like wasp or wasp, even yeah. early early guns and roses you know 
and uh, yeah, Coven, you know, those bands, you know. Yeah, you and, go, go through different genres, yeah. just to just don't be stuck in one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and those guys went nuts when I mentioned Sisters of Mercy and Fields of the Nephilim, you know, they were like going like, what? That's for faggots. Like, <laughs> you're the faggot, you know. Yeah, because they maybe expect that you say that you listen to Mayhem, you listen to Bathory, you listen to this, you listen to that. This is yeah. just, this is what people expect all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I was course. shocked that you, for example, when I interview Attila, uh, when I asked his um, influences, it i mean he played with the italian band called abarim they are like electronic yeah. and he played with goblin italian band i mean it, i was like shocked like uh, yeah for me it was uh, strange to see someone like Attila, uh, you know having different tastes and influences of course it, but it, uh, but of course it happened with, with many musicians even from that metal scene they were into jazz into yeah. blues because of course you if you play some music of course you have to be some of that music in your veins we can say for example but you have to listen what you like despite of what people think because i mean at the end yeah. uh, like you said you, you, you don't give a shit so but i think that's a problem with black metal people you know like yeah. black metal heads are complaining like uh, yeah. you know, the elitist and the honesty and true Super true, but when <laughs> it you seems more a Viking stuff than not, like metal stuff. But probably when they're home, they're probably like uh, you know dancing the Java on a <laughs> yeah. on fucking yeah. green these I don't know. Who gives yes. a shit? You know. Yes, and but also it seems these things that black metal had as to be black metal had a strong seems something more like a Viking style. You know, just some. I'm a Viking and you have, you have to be Viking and it's folk, black, folk, folk metal and that's it. But it's too much, it's too close minded. And yeah. yes, and I want to know now once, one thing that we spoke once before uh, the left hand path and uh, the Scorpio Magic and Solomon King is in your opinion what, what means to you? Because of course we spoke once about. There are people, of course, many people, they don't know this, um, I'm going to say, this philosophy, this is philosophies. And I think it's important to them to know also that there are these uh, realities in this world, except Christianity. Well, I have no clue what you're talking about. I don't know who Salomon? Uh, <laughs> you, never you, you, don't know, you never heard Salomon Key, right? <laughs> That he, he lost his key, that's what you're saying? No. Yeah, yes, um, he lost his outside the door. Yeah. And, and wow. closed the, all the, the, the demons inside. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a vague topic. So, what exactly do you want to know? Just <laughs> in your opinion, what means to you? I mean, just a brief, um, we can say, a brief definition and a brief meanings for you. That you have it. Well, meanings. Um, well, it's there are good tools here and there, a bit of everything. I'm okay. not a follower of 100% uh, of one doctrine within the occult, mm -hmm. um, because I like to make my own path on the yeah. journey. It's always uh, good. And I'm somebody who's uh, really traveling and uh, sliding between the left hand path and the median path. Yeah. Not never the right hand path, but never totally on the left. Like, I used to be totally on the left, but I realized how naive and how close-minded it was. Same if you go on the right. If you want to be in balance and in equilibrium with your universe and with your beliefs and yourself, you have to explore both sides. You have to be in balance. Yes. And being totally on one side is its naive. I'm sorry, it's naive. Just see it how you want, it's yeah. fucking naive. Yeah. So, for, for example, Solomon, you have a really great tools. To me yeah. personally with my in my line of work uh some nice some uh, very practical and interesting theories uh tools. yeah more people uh, should read the uh, arts yeah yeah Thank exactly mm -hmm. very good <laughs> <laughs> and uh and the same goes a bit with everything like um to me there's only one magic it's not a mag there's not a magic uh, reserve 
for the weekends, for the Satanists, for the thuggies, for for the telemits, for for draconians yeah, or, or tele- oh. whatever. It's only one fucking magic. Call it how you want. I don't give to them. Yeah, I agree. You're wrong. It's one magic. One, only one. Now, who and how egocentric can one be to say that, for example, uh, the magic of I'm going to take that example. Kali is reserved to her worshippers. Yes. No. Anyone who's dedicated knows how and have the real feeling yes. and envy, motivation, and, and focus. Al- and also it. is how you see the how you see those that um, philosophic, for example. For example, yeah. if you have um, we were speaking about the Talmud. I get a, t- a tattoo of uh, Alessio Crowley, the Telema, and all the time people say, oh, you you are Telema, it's the Telema follower. No, I just like the thought that you can do what you want without hurting anyone else. That's mm-hmm. that's the, my thought, how I see the Telema. But people, they just, um, you know, just, they have this idea, this mind closet idea, and you can't explain because it's something personal. Even if you explain that, we'll see, okay, uh, Alistair Crowley did this, he used drugs, he used... Yes, but his mind, his, uh, his thought, what, what he meant with, with those uh, quotes, it's true. You can do what you want without hurting no one else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so in fact, I have it here, and people most of the time say, You are crazy to do these things. And I say, No, I'm not crazy because this is me. So why I, I have not to do it and just follow the, you know, the, the sheep, the people like the sheep? Yes, and today, how do you see the black metal scene? Because there are really good black metal bands i heard from france for example there is something called the, i don't know legion noir something like that oh the legion noir yeah oh, are, that, that was that, from uh, the early 90s that, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah there so are yeah but not, nowadays there are bands like uh, i don't know um, if i'm not wrong like bas mahash uh, set uh, or i don't know if you, what do you think about that today Black metal nowadays. Um, well, that's a difficult question <laughs> because uh, I've, my opinion is shared. It's um, in the meantime, it's not as bad as it was a few years ago when okay, there was so. a big trend. Mm. Now uh, people are a bit more relevant. I don't yeah. say that they are all, and the scene is completely far from it. But at least we have a bit of coherence and relevance in this uh, in the scene nowadays. Um, you have a, really the quality, yeah. the copycat, and the shit. You have really those three categories, you know <laughs> yeah. now. Yes. Yeah, so you can see the people who really want to copy the idol, or the people or the wannabes, you know, and, and, and the poser, uh, of course. And you have the shit. Like uh, those ones who are, want to make like a straight edge black metal, or like oh uh, politically correct black metal, <laughs> or like uh, what anti-fa is it? black. Metal. What is it? A political, a politically correct black metal or anti-fa black? I mean, it's a, it's something like the white white metal, like the Christian exactly. metal. It's the you know. It's, it's so like... all that crap. To me, it's in the shit bag because they didn't understand anything, anything to what black metal stands for. For, the, for them, it's just music that some bands they like is making. No, yeah. it's not that. You didn't understand shit. You are shit. Yeah. And just to having the thought and that philosophy to make a black metal band with that concept, you are shit yourself. Yeah. So it's a bit extreme what I'm saying, but I'm sorry. That that's no, it. That's, that's how it is. Yeah, and that's my the same speech I have since the fucking beginning, and I will never change my speech. This is, um, I think, this is the, always the best things being uh, true. Say your thought, even if it could be, you know, brutal or whatever. But you have a honest, an honest people, an honest uh, person with the word. Is uh, even if you have a, a, a lot of enemies, it doesn't matter. I mean, you have to speak your. Okay, at least on myself, I'm honest and I'm proud to be. You know. 
in those yeah. bands, you know, I understood as well, you know, like for example, those politically involved uh, bands, yeah. like even the NSBM. To me, there are some bands that are making good music, sure, but to me, they go in the same bag because they still same shit. They didn't understand anything what black metal stands for. Black metal was never mm -hmm. about race, no, no, about politics, yeah. about being homo, queer, gay, whatever, no. or being uh, like a supportive of the climate change. No. We are pretty much for the opposite. No. Can you imagine a song, Save the Penguins from Black Metal? Yeah, well, like some Greta Black Metal, you know, how fucking dare you call yourself Black Metal? How I dare think, you? I think that's something to save the world, so for the climate changing, you should sing bands or artists like, you said before, Britney Spears, leave it to the pop music, something like that. Yeah, no, seriously. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and if you have, for example, to um, there is a song of uh, black metal for you that incarnates better the, the I mean, black metal. If uh, you can choose a band, a song, or an album that incarnates the sound of uh, the, the essence of the black metal. In your this from Dark Throne. Both, both for you, in in your opinion, of all black metal scene, and. Oven Tron. Um, Oven Tron, yeah. yeah. So for me, for personally, the song okay. from another band okay. that uh, represents perfectly well what black metal is for me in every aspect, in every corner, in everything. It's As Flitter Miss of Satan's Peace from Dark Throne on Transylvania in Hunger. Okay. That song, that song only is to me the song that symbolizes what black metal is in my eyes. That's it. And um, from Enthroned, that would be a bit arrogant for me to say one song even. I don't feel comfortable with that because... But in my heart, a song that represents pure black metal in, an, in the Enthroned back catalog... Uh, I don't know, for me, they do all do. So it's a bit hard. It's not really... I would never be objective. Uh, yeah. I cannot say honestly. Even if I, it took me, it would take to me ten hours to find one song. <laughs> one song. Just say like, like uh, uh, oh, almost all I, the let's songs. Go, let's go for through the cortex. <laughs> through the <laughs> cortex. <laughs> yes. I would take that one. And just going to the almost last questions. You were sp you were you were speaking before about some future plans. What what are uh, of course, we are still again after six months before in the COVID time pocket. But if you you are some future, you have future plans with Enthron right now, or some lives, some you see, you were saying that there is some all music, new songs, new materials. Yes, we do. Good to know. And what? <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah, wait, no, we are working on the. On the successor of uh, called Black Suns, yeah, um, but it's going quite slow because of the confinement and uh, yeah, that sure. uh, bullshit that the government want to us to believe. Uh, so yeah. it takes way longer than it should. Normally, we should probably be already uh, almost ready to go in the studio, but it's impossible. It won't be before the album won't be before 2022 anyway. Yeah. So. Um, but we're working on it, and um, I don't want, and I cannot say too much about it yet. But okay, um, but um, yeah, um, yeah, you see the expression. You're so, happy about it. Yeah. You have an happy face. <laughs> so, but uh, lyric-wise, I'm just gonna say this. Um, that's probably the my best lyrics ever. Um, I had a compliment uh, from uh, some people uh, that read them, and I'm not talking about uh, relatives or anything. Like, uh, I co wrote one of the songs with uh, uh, one of the greatest occult writers of our time wow. for the next album. And uh, when I exposed him the subject and um, showed him what I wrote, uh, he told me that uh, it was. Not only uh, occult, uh, occult related correct, but as well great poetry. And I was like, fuck, I mean, that's probably the best compliment I ever had. I can imagine. I mean, my lyrics. And um, 
So yeah. So basically, the lyrics are really deep on the next one. It's uh, again another approach of uh, occultism, mm -hmm. but not but totally different of what we did till now. Okay. Totally. Totally. Uh, some parts will be mm -hmm. most recognizable, but it's totally different. And what about some? Did you plan some live gigs in the, in the I don't know, 2022? Yeah. 20, yeah, some live planned. Yeah, we have uh, mostly, normally, you know how it goes now. Uh, all the festivals we were supposed to do in 2021, uh, yeah. that they are if, they keep on, if they're still on 22 or 23, we'll see. We don't know 23, yet. 23, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's yeah. tough, it's tough. I mean, it's staying without seeing a live gigs until 2022, yeah. 2023, 2029, I expected. But 2022, I mean, there are these uh, fucking vaccine right now that it's uh, going uh, the things slower and slower and slower because yeah. i think if you want to travel or if you want to go on i don't know cinema concert whatever uh, theater you need to prove that you had a vaccine or at least you are negative yeah yes and but I think it's a kind of way of kind of way of the dictature. They want you you have to do the vaccine if you want to travel, if you want to do this, and then that's oh, yeah. that's in Belgium that's, you will have to in Belgium if you want to have a job, you must have the vaccine. If mm -hmm. um, you didn't do the vaccine, you get fired from your job, and if you didn't do the vaccine, you cannot get a new job. So basically, you're fucked if you didn't do your vaccine. Yeah, I shouldn't. I should. I have. I have relatives in Belgium. I should speak with them for seeing for because they are completely anti anti vaccine. So I wanted to see to see if the what what the what what what, what happening. Yeah, this uh, it's uh, it's sad because I mean if if you can get fired if you don't have the vaccine is uh, not fair. I mean, you should be free to decide. But of course, uh, I mean, uh, it's a a huge, huge topic to speak about vaccine or not vaccine and, and yeah. which vaccine and what, whatever. But in the end, I want to this time leave you a message not to just all of your fun, but especially because we, we were speaking before that, you know, guys approaching to black metal, maybe they are some posers or whatever. A message to anyone is approaching to black metal today. What will you say to them? Um, if you want to make a band, for example, don't do it. We have enough bands and it's not for fun you do that. You must have a reason to do it. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, if you want to go into black metal, do it. Who am I to say no? I'm not, I'm not fucking Mussolini, I'm not fucking Mussolini, you know, so fuck off, you know. Just do it if you Even want. Even if you were Mussolini. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you were Mussolini, so, you know, the, the people... But, we had the, the you know the, the partisans people didn't do that to so <laughs> anyone was <laughs> so at the end just a message for a strong fans poison rock fans and again thank you and not only guys for this the, the second but this time more we can say more talkative interview than just answer yeah. and, and question and answer question i don't like the type of an interview i prefer speaking it's so formal. It's too it's formal. So formal, yes. You was too formal. This is more um, just like a, a, I don't like to say teacher, like a conversation. It's better. Yeah, it's like uh, we're having a drink and uh, just a Yes, coffee. I don't have a drink. I can no, have some cigarettes. I will have a coffee in a while. So, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, sure. Talking about that. <laughs> yes. So thank you so well, much. And I hope to, to listen to your, your, your album soon and uh, let's stay in touch as, all, as we did in this, in this month. And maybe, I don't know, in six months we will have a new interview. Maybe, who knows, <laughs> for the new album. I don't know. We can make an interview well, updating. Why not? Let's hope so. Uh, so, so thank you so well, much. Thank you. thank you so thank much. Thank you for the interview and uh, the great conversation. Pleasure. It's always a pleasure. It's always a and pleasure. And let's stay in touch. Thank you so much, you know, I guess. Have a nice night. Bye. You too.